All right, this is take two because I was on wonky internet and uh, it kept cutting out. So hopefully people are going to rejoin this live. For those of you who are catching the replay, uh, today's topic is about why I've chosen to speak up about my depression and the reasons why I've chosen to do that. Uh, for those of you that are joining up right now, please, hello again. Thank you for coming back for round two. This should be much stronger of a connection. Isn't it crazy how in Bali the Wi-Fi connections are generally worse off than just using the cell phones? So it's one of those interesting things. Um, as you join up, please let me know where in the world you're joining from. It's one of my favorite things about doing these lives. So we all get a chance to see just like how interconnected we are globally. Um, it's really cool. Um, today's topic is about my most recent post about why I've chosen to speak up about depression. Um, as people are joining, I want to let everybody know that my in-depth breakdowns and the sharings of most of what I learn and, and um, what I'm understanding about my, my life in general um, is shared on my podcast. So my podcast is called The Deep Dive with Adam Roa. It's available on SoundCloud and iTunes and, you know, your podcast apps and everything. So if you want to just be continuing to l learn through what I'm learning and sharing, the podcast is the primary way I'm doing that because I'm not making, you know, YouTube videos or anything right now. Um, and let's see, we got LA, Maryland, Montreal, Canada, Austin, Texas, California, San Diego, India, Nepal, New York, Canada. All right, we got we got an international audience going right here. Uh, thank you everybody for for rejoining this um, and welcome to new faces. Real briefly, I'm going to touch on a, a few points here because as I shared about my depression in my most recent post, I had so many messages of support. I was actually overwhelmed by how many people could relate. Um, so many people s sharing with me that they had been through it themselves and. Um, are going through it themselves right now even. And I also recognize that the, um, there, there's a vast majority of the population that will uh, have uh, depression at some point in, in their lifetime. You know, it's, it's so many people that will experience it for a little bit. Um, the, the depression itself the symptoms, I'm going to read you the actual symptoms based on psych, psychiatry.org, right? Depression um, affects how you feel, think, and act. Um, it causes feelings of sadness and our loss of interest in activities once enjoyed. The symptoms can vary from mild to severe, and they include feeling sad, loss of interest in, or pleasure in activities you once enjoyed, changes in appetite, weight loss or gain, trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, loss of energy or increased fatigue, increase in purposeless uh, physical activity like hand wringing or pacing or slowed movements. Um, there's thoughts of death or suicide, difficulty thinking or concentrating, feeling worthless or guilty. Um, there's so many different parts of this right? Like, let me know, show me some hearts. If you at some point in your life have felt like you've experienced a good number of those symptoms. Um, another, uh, a definition that I had seen about depression had, had been, um, that it was, you know, an intense period of sadness lasting for at least two weeks. And like, I crushed that. I, I crush that in terms of the amount of time that I've spent in prolonged periods of sadness. For those of you who have been watching The Art of Choosing Love, um, for those of you who don't know, The Art of Choosing Love is my YouTube show. Um, y even the start of season two, I spoke to, wow, I, um, I have this thing happening and I can't seem to shake it. It's like this dark cloud hanging over me and no matter what I do, I can't break free of it. Um, so I've been openly talking about it to some extent or some degree that, uh, since the beginning of the year. And, uh, if you look at <laughs> the season one of the art of choosing love, I was, I was healing from heartbreak. Uh, and then I was healing from sexual trauma and I never labeled it as depression. I never labeled it as depression because I didn't want to, um, feel like if I put a label on it, like depression, I was somehow removing my empowerment, that I was now 
a depressed individual and that meant all of these things. And my biggest belief is that we are the creators of our reality. That is a foundational belief to everything that I, I am on this planet right now. And the idea that I could have depression that somehow was taking away my creatorship, that somehow was taking away my choice, because we have free will as human beings. Religious texts and, and ancient wisdom talk about our free will. And what does free will actually mean? Free will is our ability to choose how we, we respond in each and every moment. That's what free will is. Free will, when something happens in our life, if we get into a car accident, if we get fired from a job, if we go through a breakup, how do we respond? And the way that we choose to respond is going to create our energetic vibration and our vibration goes out into the world and the law of attraction, the law of magnetism happens and we attract like energy. We attract the people who are vibrating similar to us. We attract the experiences that are vibrating similar to us and we create more of the reality that we are already embodying. And so the idea that I could have depression um, and be labeled as that somehow felt disempowering to me. I would just refer to it as a deep sadness, a, cl a dark cloud over my head. I'm walking through quicksand. I have these depression-like symptoms. And I just did not want to disempower myself. And here's the thing. I've tried so many different approaches to this over the years. I have all so many different tools, and yet at the same time, I w it wasn't breaking out of it. And as I've been going through this physical detox, right, I've, changed, I've been changing my diet, I've been getting blood tests and urine tests, I've gotten thermometry done where they take the temperature of 100 different points on your body, and I'm learning about the physical um, contributors and the things in my system that are not operating optimally. And because they're not operating optimally, they're affecting things like my mood and various things. And at the same time, I've been speaking to a couple therapists, and this, the therapists have lit, like helped me understand that, yes, I have depression. But the great thing about acknowledging that I have depression that I wasn't expecting when I acknowledged it is it's treatable. Depression is actually one of the most treatable things um, to have as far as a mental or uh, mental illness it's something that uh, there is, there's like proven things that work and help. And so I'm, I'm finding empowerment through the acceptance of where I'm at. Because now I have the ability to go on Google and say how to heal depression. I can go on YouTube and look up, you know, um, dealing with sexual trauma I can read books about it. I can talk to people about it like, like all of you. And so I want to, to share with you that I feel like I now for the first time in maybe my whole life have a path that I feel like I can follow or at least be on to truly transcend and overcome this thing that has haunted me for most of my life. And... That's huge because one of the biggest struggles that I've had with my depression is feeling like there was nothing I could do, that it would never go away, that it would never end, and I would be stuck in this for the rest of my life. And that is so overwhelming and creates this spiral of negative thoughts that are going in my head that continue to suck my energy and continue to bring me into isolation where I don't want to talk to anyone, I don't want to speak to anyone, I just want to like curl up into a ball because I feel like it's hopeless. And labeling it as depression and, and looking at how much I've learned in the last week, since actually accepting this, I have done what I always do, which is dive in because I want to understand it. I want to get to the root of it and I want to move through it. And so I've been watching hours of YouTube videos. I've been reading articles about it. I've been talking to people about it. And as I've been doing that, I have learned so much so much that I'm not going to get into on this Instagram Instagram feed, but like, I'll give you an example. Treating trauma in the body, I've been going to like ayahuasca ceremonies and I've been going to like healing sessions and things. Treating trauma in the body cannot be done through a catharsis. 
meaning a really powerful like event, like ayahuasca ceremonies, like, oh my God, I'm healed. It can't actually be truly healed through catharsis because the imprint of that trauma happens so fast and so intensely in the body that if you meet it with that energy, it creates a fight or flight response within that trauma that's stored in the body and it gets defensive, it puts up its walls. It actually can't be healed that way. So I've been going about it in a way that's been basically proven to be ineffective. That's just one example of all the things that I have been learning about about it because I've been able to to embrace the... um, embrace the definition of it. I've been able to embrace it and say, okay, this doesn't define me. This actually just puts it into a container where I can look at it. It's no longer just this thing all around me and in me. I have it here and I'm developing a relationship with it and I'm learning how to be with it. And this is huge, huge for me. And all of what I'm learning about the depression and everything, I'm going to be sharing on my podcast. So for those of you who, who don't know that I have a podcast or haven't started listening to it, I encourage you to start listening to it. It's called The Deep Dive. That's where I'm going to be sharing this learning. And be, based on how many people are, are struggling with depression or have struggled with depression, I encourage you to join me on this journey because right now I feel like I'm at a starting point despite the fact that I've done things about it for years and years and years and years. And I can see some of these comments right now from you talking about how how many of you can relate to this. And I want to send you love. And what I'll say is I shared in my post, I shared um, because I, it's a part of the process of accepting where I'm at. I did not share this for you, although I can see how many of you have benefited from it already, and I will begin sharing, but I'm sharing what I'm learning. I'm sharing it for, because as I'm learning it, I'm, in, I'm, I'm processing it, and sharing it with all of you helps me process it, and by saying I have depression, what I'm doing is I'm accepting it about myself because I've judged myself for so long, for not being able to be happy for extended periods of time. I have told myself that I was a fraud and a phony because I'm, I get on Instagram and I post about how you can empower yourself and then the next day I'm in a, a dark depressive hole. And I, I have struggled for so long feeling like no one should listen to anything I have to say. And yet, here I am right now with all of you saying, I have depression, and that's okay. That doesn't mean that what I have to share is not valuable. It doesn't mean that I am broken, and it doesn't mean that I need to judge myself. What it does mean is that I have something that is very treatable if I look into how to treat it. And some of what This is is recognizing that my physical body has not been able to actually process the love that I know is available to me. My physical body has not actually been able to allow it in. My nervous system being in a state of fight or flight because of the somatic trauma stored in the body, okay? What that means is that there, there have been some traumatic events in, in my life. They're also referred to as adverse childhood experiences, the times I was hit with belts by my father or, or wooden paddles, the times that I was, um, the time I was molested, like those things are, are traumatic and they exist in the system, especially if we don't know how to process them out in a healthy way. And so um, when we don't have the ability to process it in a healthy way, it stores in the body until a time when the, the system feels like it's safe enough to actually allow that emotion to move through. And so the journey of moving through the trauma is actually a journey about feeling safe in our bodies and in our environments. And so I'm learning how to do that. And part of how I'm learning how to do that is feeling at optimal health. I have had 
heavy, I have, I have some level of heavy metal toxicity in my body right now. It is affecting my lymphatic system, which is not properly draining toxins from my body, which is impacting the, the cerebral vascularity in my brain, meaning my brain is not getting appropriate circulation to the point that it's actually severe. It's a problem. And my sugar levels, my insulin levels are so drastically low, like pre-diabetic low, because my system is not knowing how to process the sweetness. It's searching for the sweetness. I'm giving it so much sweetness, and, and it wasn't able to process it. And all of these things are physical responses, and understand that your physical body, your emotional and mental bodies, they're all layered on top of each other. They're all interconnected. They don't exist in isolation. So when people say, yeah, depression may be a chemical imbalance in my brain, absolutely. The chemicals in my brain that are, are operating in a way that are contributing to the depressive feelings that I feel in my body, absolutely. That's also because my body is responding to my mental and emotional bodies. And so all of this is interconnected. And so for those of you, I'm going to bring it to you right now. For those of you who are struggling with anything anything at all, but specifically if you're struggling with depression, understand that it is incredibly treatable. It is incredibly treatable and there are a number of things and I encourage you to start doing your own research on things that have worked and start trying them for yourself. Different things work for different people. Your journey with this will be unique from my journey. However, I do, if you are already here on this live, if you're already looking at my content, if you're already watching my YouTube videos or listening to my podcast, if you're already doing that, then you resonate with me on some level and that means that I probably have medicine for you and I'm gonna be sharing so openly about this journey that maybe there'll be a key for you in it. But we can't just sit back in our isolation and feel sad for ourselves and not talk to anyone and not do any research and not take any action and expect it to change. We can't expect it to change if we're not willing to take action on it. And so I'm going to take action on it. And one of the first actions I'm taking is learning to feel safe in my body. I'm tuning into my body more. I'm clearing out the heavy metal toxicity. I'm, I'm working on my lymphatic drainage. I'm doing all of these things to support feeling good in my body and telling my body it's safe and helping regulate the nervous system. And by doing that, my body will feel safe enough to allow more love in and to allow more trauma out. And so that's an encouragement for me to all of you because I feel like it's a safe starting place. If you've been dealing with a lot of sadness, if you've been dealing with a lot of pain, if you feel like you have unresolved stuff in your past, start to tune in with your body daily, little bits at a time. Start to tune in with your body and start to tell your body it's safe and it's okay. And that doesn't mean cathartic movements. It doesn't mean anything. It means really gentle, the way that you would treat an, a, your inner child, the way you would treat a young child who had just been through a trauma. Imagine whatever that trauma was. So for me, if I was molested at the age of five, if I, if, if I saw a five-year-old that had just been molested and they walk in my door and they are just eyes wide, don't know what to do, in shutdown, how would I treat them? How would I touch their body? How would I hug them? We get to do that for ourselves. So our nervous system knows that it's okay. Because the depression is suppression. It's something that we haven't allowed ourselves to feel. It's something that has been trapped deep inside ourselves for years and years and years. And we get to be gentle with ourselves in this process. And we get to start that process of being gentle with ourselves and loving ourselves by acknowledging and accepting where we're at. That is why I posted what I posted. That is why I'm doing this live right now, by showing you that I'm okay being in depression right now. I'm okay acknowledging that that's the truth of where I'm at because it's not the truth of who I am. It's the truth of where I'm at. It is not the truth of who I am. This depression is temporary 
and it will be something that I look at in the rear view mirror. And along the way, it will be one of the things that is happening for me. It is happening for me because it is helping me develop the skills and the tools and the embodiment that is a part of who I desire to be in my biggest vision for what I want for my life. For those of you who have been struggling with this, the big vision you have for your life, the depression that you're experiencing or have experienced is the school that you are going through to give you the tools to create that life for yourself. It is always happening for us. We are creating it on some level for ourselves. And I believe that. And that's why I am okay with having it now. I am not okay with having it for the rest of my life and I'm gonna do everything I can to move through it. I'm gonna share it with all of you through my podcast, through my videos and my posts so that you can move through it too. If you want to, if you choose to, and if you're willing to take the action to make the changes. Remember that the awareness is not change. Just because you have awareness, just because I have awareness that I have depression does not instantly change it. Awareness gives us choice. And that choice, when we make new choices, that leads to change. So I'm making new choices, starting by posting and sharing about it. And I appreciate all of you for being a part of this journey. I encourage you to share this video out because so many people struggle with depression. So many people feel hopeless in their struggle. And we get to remind people that there is hope if they choose to lean into that. If we choose to lean into that. And we get to support each other and spread messages of love and and support for everybody. Thank you for being a part of this online tribe and this community. I've seen so many of your comments. I love you all so much. You give me so much strength and you bring purpose to my life. And I am so grateful. <laughs> I'm getting emotional talking about you guys. Like I hope you realize how much you all mean to me. Truly how much it means to me to, to know that we're, I'm not alone because I see it through us and our interactions. I see it because people come up to me in person and, and tell me how much of an impact this all makes. Thank you. I want to remind you that always, in all ways, you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. <laughs>